Hong Kong Trilogy, Preschooled, Preoccupied, Preposterous. Christopher Doyle compiles documentary footage, stages it to some degree, compiles a narrative in post-production, reminds me of Rossellini's classic India, Matra Bhumi, and, like Rossellini, composed a triumphant masterpiece, in my opinion. It's Doyle, Australia's possibly finest bred cinematic talent, so naturally the photography is some of the best we will ever see, but also his direction, his ability to extract soul from his subjects, or at least, um, producer Jenny Suen's ability to extract soul from their subjects, is utterly extraordinary too. The Film Began Life is a short film commissioned by the Hong Kong International Film Festival for Doyle to complete as part of a wider omnibus film. Apparently what we see is the first section of the film, a free, was initially intended to be that aforementioned Shaw, although Doyle chose to expand this project into a feature film. And I'm very glad he did, the film is exemplary. The interviews were conducted by one of the film's credited producers, one Jenny Suen, who helped facilitate the production further as Doyle requested it be expanded into a feature film. It wound up being the first Hong Kong film production to successfully employ a Kickstarter campaign, apparently, and received funds ex exceeding the $100,000 they had requested. Specifically, Doyle was excited to document the budding umbrella movement in Hong Kong during the Hong Kong democracy protests of 2014, which is the year the film was in production. The umbrella served as a symbol of non-violent resistance against the police who were attempting to pepper spray these protesting crowds. The protest crowds numbered in the tens of thousands, and the umbrella movement began to distinguish itself specifically from groups such as Civic Passion by specifically advocating for non-violence. Particularly, they wanted to emphasize and call their organization, refer to their organization, an attempt at a movement rather than a revolution. They specifically made sure that they'd referred to that the move that meant the group would be referred to as an umbrella movement rather than umbrella revolution. They wanted to make sure that no one had the wrong idea. Doyle apparently calls his the style of filmmaking employed here Rilla Dada. According to whomever edited this film's Wikipedia article, and I feel no shame in using that website, by the way. Real Dada can be defined as a free-flowing narrative form that owes just as much to the absurdity of real life as it does to the cinematic language through which it was interpreted. Cool. The three segments are named after its title, as one might imagine. Preschool looks at students. Preoccupied observes those who form the backbone of the work economy. And Preposterous is about the trivialities of retirees' twilight years. The same informative Wikipedia article contains an unsourced quotation from Doyle himself, a director's statement, if we will. Let's read it aloud here. The way this film evolved demanded a lot more give and take, much more deliberation, more intuitive fine-tuning than a more narrative-driven work. We wanted to give back to Hong Kong at least a fraction of what it has given us. So we started to talk to real Hong Kong people to find out what it's like to be them. The children shared their wondrous interpretation of the world. The young people express hope and resilience in the face of the lies they feel they have been fed, while the senior citizens who have seen it all still laugh and live with the same wonder as the children we begin with. The voices of these three generations are the film's dynamic. Their wisdom is unintended, their voices are rarely heard, and their ironies go disregarded. They are the subject and the real authors of this film. As the press and the kids encouraged us as we shot on location, at least one had written in a caption of a photo they uploaded to Facebook, of us shooting at the Umbrella Movement campsite. Please help us film our hopes and dreams. What else can a film be all about? Fun. I think the international community hasn't been great on recognizing the Hong Kong strife for freedom and independence. Sometimes I feel as though the cosmopolitan actors of the political discourse have a tendency to base their care on issues depending on who is supporting it. Because there is such a stupid knee-jerk reaction to China about anything, warranted or otherwise, any critique of China can be interpreted as this bullshit, oh, oh, oh silly right-wingers, let's not care about a certain issue because it triggers the right. When one doesn't have to be right-wing, believe me, those people want nothing to do with me. The political right would press a button and kill people like me if they could. I have no love for them. You know, no one has to be one of those lunatics to support the valid causes within Hong Kong. Not to claim they're all saints, some of it is weird, anarchic, and even racist, apparently. 
in the Hong Kong uh, freedom movement, you know, the whole, um, you know, the shiner thing, which is kind of gross. The photography bowled me over, the humanity of its subjects floored me, its depiction of this economic unit we call a city is one of the most beautiful modern works realised during the 2010s in cinema. I think one would be hard pressed to not be moved at all by Hong Kong Trilogy, and if they aren't, call me up. I may be able to perform an exorcism. Out, Jezebel! Out! In Jesus' name! I'm still a Catholic. They haven't excommunicated me yet. It's an extraordinary act of film art, both as a documentary which seeks to emphasise the relatability and emotive complexities of the human subject, and as an act of film photography, effortlessly framing its subjects against their environmental backdrop, in this case the city of Hong Kong, and how it has shaped the expectations of those who, lived amongst, who live amongst its seemingly intended metropolitan optimism. An exemplary work, Christopher Doyle is a phenomenal artist, and if one can find a way to view Hong Kong trilogy, please. I implore one to do so.